Wednesday night, one of the biggest grudge matches in Australian boxing between two of the most compelling and polarizing figures in the sport who happen to be world rated as well. It's a world title eliminator between Isaac, the head splitter Hardman, and the pretty boy, Michael Zarafa. They've both joined me and I'll start with you, Michael. Um, we are in separate studios for this particular shoot for safety reasons. What happened the last time that the two of you were in the same room? Oh, mate, he got all emotional and had to make a scene to uh, try to get his point across. But, mate, what didn't faze me, not one bit. Like I said, I knew I got under his skin. That's just how he is. He's got no, no brains. Isaac, what happened? Hey, he come and tried to be my friend. You know, shook my coach's hand, claims he didn't know who he was, but he was the first hand he shook and went and said hello to Dean, tried to butter him up, and then uh, I told him to get out of my way, and he said something, I don't even know what, I just grabbed him by the throat and treated him like the little boy he is. Mick, what's your take on where this all started? He's just been behind me. He's been in my shadow for the last how many years. He, he used to love me. He used to reach out to me and send me all these beautiful messages. Now he, uh, he wants to fight me. So like I said, the fight's there and all the talk stops Wednesday. You know, that's, he, he, I've spoken to all these other opponents and they say the only way he tries to win is because he doesn't back himself. He doesn't really believe in his ability. He tries to message, FaceTime. You know, I was speaking to Carlos. I was speaking to everybody and, you know, that's, that's his game plan and it doesn't work for me. I've been at that level at the top before and I've, I've fought bigger names than him. So for me, it's just another, another person stopping my world title journey. Is that right, Isaac? You're a Michael Zarafa fan? No, I appreciated what he was doing um, oh, for years. I got into boxing in 2019, so I've been here for two years. I actually sat in this studio and said the Michael Zarafa fight probably a bit far ahead for me because he was doing the zoo thing and then he completely dogged it and was a complete coward that night and I made it very clear that um, that was the case and he got all butt hurt and upset about it. I shouldn't be saying his name and we're here now and I can't wait to cave his head in next Wednesday. What have you made of uh, his career so far? Obviously there were parts that you did respect and you quite liked, but overall, what do you think of the Michael Zarafa journey? Ah, uh, he's a dud. Like any time, the four times he stepped up, he's lost. You know, he, and that was the, the one, his biggest fight was the first Jeff Horn one. And it was no secret Jeff Horn was in, wasn't in the condition he was. If the Jeff Horn that fought Manny Pacquiao turned up that night, he would have wiped the floor with Michael Zaffer. He's a dud. He's got the neck the size of a 2B HB pencil. I'm going to break it next week. Michael, um, what do you think of what Isaac's done so far? A 25 year old, he's 12 and 0. Have you seen anything you've liked so far? Not one bit. He's not even the best middleweight in his gym. And like I said, I'm not going to get caught up in his game and, and, and talk smack like he always does. Like I said, I've got a game plan in motion. I've got a job to do. Um, and this is a bounce back story for me. Like I said, I'm going out there to make a statement. And uh, he's overlooked me. And I know he's overlooked me. And um, he'll learn the hard way. Yeah, he's backing himself because he walks around at 89 kilos. Um, but like I said, it comes down to, to timing and um, speed, you know, a boxing IQ. Um, and for me, like I said, I'm happy to go 12 rounds with him and, 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 and humiliate him, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, um, whatever the outcome is, the outcome is. But I know what needs to be done. And um, like I said, he's just talking. And I've switched off that. You know, I've switched off since the get-go. I knew I didn't even need to take this fight. You know, my team asked me, so we didn't, we didn't need this fight because we're number one, he was number two. But, you know, it's a fight Australia wants to see. And we, we, we'll give back to the fight fans. Uh, you know, he's a hungry kid. I was in his position at one stage of my life. I was 25, hungry, wanted to fight the bigger name. Shut so, up. You know, Shut up, Michael Zrafa. You're a wanker. Credit to him for no trying to step to up. To but shit. like I said, there's a job that needs to be done. And um, This has all been said before. Every bit of eight, it has been days, said before. Eight days to go. Every little bit you just said is a cry for help. You've said it all before. Shut up. And you're a different man this time around. You were fucking real vocal with Jeff on all these other people. But not now. You're getting cold feet. It's getting close now. And you know that. All the best, all the best. I'm gonna smash you to pieces. Isaac, um, what happens in this fight? I think one or two things will happen. Um, similar to the way E-Man fight went, could have went, could go. Like he comes out all emotional because he's way too emotional and he tries to fight me, which will be to his undoing because um, I'll just collect him and he'll fall asleep uh, on the canvas. Or he tries to get on his bike and box me for 12 rounds, which eventually, the ring is only so big, you know, it's only, you can't keep running, and he's no fitter than any other man I've fought, you know, they claim he's the fittest man ever, but there's 12 rounds, it's what, 36 minutes, I get to catch up to him, and I ain't gonna land one shot, so, um, either way, I win this fight, and Michael Zarafa loses, 
uh, he could maybe retire. He might get a fight with Camilleri or something down there in Melbourne at the Pavilion or, you know, one of those things. Maybe his teammate Bomber or something. But I ride off into the sunset. Zarafa packs his bags. Michael, what's your prediction and your response to that? Mate, like I said, he, he doesn't have the things that I'm going to bring on that night. And I truly, I know that. I believe that. What is that? He can Double just, jab he, cross. He just keeps talking. You'll see. Double jab you, cross. You, you, you keep believing that. You keep believing just like you did Double with Taylor Cross and, and Whitehall and, and all the other guys that you, you know, beat so convincingly with that huge right hand of yours, man. Jesus, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. You know, just like I said. You won't. Tune you in, fucking wake up on the floor. Tune in April 20, the convention centre, Zarafa V, whatever his name is, and we'll go from there. Any final words for each other before we wrap this up and we move through yeah. to fight week, which is going to be exciting in itself. Isaac, uh, anything you want to say to Michael Zarafa? This will be the last time, I guess, you talk to him before uh, next week, unless you've got plans to uh, get in touch over social media. <laughs> nah, he's blocked me on everything, so I can't even do that anymore. Even he's, I can't even text him anymore because he's blocked me. I just hope you don't get COVID. Um, don't pull a heartstring, don't dog it. Get there April 20 at the Melbourne Convention Centre. Stand across that ring from me and um, have a go. And Michael? May the best man win. All the best, buddy. I'll see you in seven days, mate. Well, there we go. It's an exciting fight. It's been a fantastic build-up. Cannot wait to see it. It's Michael Zarafa against Isaac Hardman. I'm Ben Damon and I'll see you at the fight. <laughs>